What's not unusual about these spiders? They have they have the biggest eyes of any of any spider. Uh, they're 2,000 times more sensitive um, to light than humans are. Uh, they the way that they hunt is fascinating. They're called net casting spiders because they actually they make this little rectangular net and they dangle above the ground or a leaf and they'll throw it down or actually hit things out of the air, which is, it's incredible to see. They can, yeah, they really like to eat mosquitoes, which is fabulous. Uh, I can find them pretty easily in Florida. I typically go to uh, parks around Gainesville and you can get good numbers there. I've also found them um, at a rest area in outside of Savannah, Georgia. So huh. they're at least in two states, but probably not many more. So during the day, they, they're very cryptic and they look like little sticks. Um, but I think they, they've evolved potentially to look like the end of palm fronds. So really, whenever I'm looking for them, I look for palms first. And so any state that doesn't have palm fronds might not find them. So the, the infrared video was part of this field study that I did out in Florida, uh, Gainesville, Florida. And um, I went out and I was trying to test whether or not these spiders actually use vision for foraging. Um, for decades, it's been assumed that they have these really big eyes and they hunt in this really seemingly visually demanding manner. Um, so they have to use these big eyes for, for hunting. So I went out and I, I tested that. So I went, I grabbed a bunch of spiders and I temporarily blinded them with dental plastic. Um, and what's really nice is that after you put it on the eyes, you can actually remove it afterwards. So for every spider that I caught, I could blind them, put them, put them back where I found them, let them make their web, and uh, see, see how well they could still hunt with or without vision. Uh, I found that um, when spiders were blinded, when they couldn't see out of their big eyes, they were significantly worse at foraging. And the most, in, the most interesting part is that it's really what they couldn't catch was most interesting to me because they couldn't catch things off the ground when they couldn't see, but they could still catch things out of the air. Uh, it suggests that they've They've evolved these large eyes to, to catch things off the ground primarily. Um, it also suggests that they can catch still a good number of prey without these enlarged eyes, which is also pretty neat. And as far as web building spiders go, not many of them can catch things both off the ground and out of the air. So they're, they're definitely in a good niche. I'm here visiting the Hoy Lab, and I'm working with Ron Hoy and Gil Menda, and their team have figured out a way to get live recordings of spiders and neural activity. And so right now we're, we're plugging electrodes in these spiders and playing back a bunch of different stimuli and seeing how they react and yeah, mm. different sensitivity thresholds and contrast. It's, We've had some really exciting recordings pretty much from the first day. Uh, we figured out that they're, they're very sensitive to uh, auditory stimuli um, and at really high frequencies, which no one really expected. Uh, we got a very nice uh, single unit. You can see here the very, very nice single unit. And um, uh, what we found when we recorded from the brain that they are very sensitive at the low frequencies uh, and also they went up to high frequencies uh, but when I recorded from the leg of the net casting spider uh, we found that they are very sensitive all the way up to almost 5 kilohertz uh, at, and in the low frequency we couldn't see much responses from the leg from the sensor. I uh, have found sensitivities out to, out to 5 kilohertz now from the behavior of the animal itself 
one wouldn't have suspected that. So the what I really like about your findings is that by by using electrophysiological measurements, we open up a window into the spider's sensitivity that ha that have not or have not heretofore been demonstrated through either behavior or, uh, or morphology. So they can catch things out of the air, so you think that they'd be sensitive to 100, 200 hertz, but they're, they're sensitive to five kilohertz sound, which is, it's a mystery. We don't know what exactly, like what the function of that is, and we also don't know how they do it. We don't know the organ that they're using to actually pick up these frequencies.